All right, with a diagnosis like something like occipital neuralgia, or if you want to use less fancy words, just neck pain and pain that refers up the skull or to the eye, particularly behind the eye, I want to give you a good overview of the muscles that are involved, the nerves that are involved, and what can happen and where they can kind of get stuck or be problematic. And that way you can start to be working on things yourself maybe slightly differently than you're already doing and know where I am trying to make a difference when I am addressing things a little bit more in depth, whether that's with joint mobility or working on dry needle therapy to a certain area. So let's just start with this top layer, the upper trap. Most people tend to get upper trap pain with occipital neuralgia. Um, and I'm just going to, we'll just refer to this as neck pain and eye pain. When you are looking at this upper trap, you'll see that up here, you see little yellow coming out of the top of that muscle. So what I want you to pay attention to, let me zoom in here, right here where that, and if you want to feel it on yourself, if you're feeling around on the base of your skull where that little pointy part is, that's right there. If you move just off to the side, sometimes when you rub around there, you can actually feel those nerves or you'll rub over something and you're like, oh, that kind of aches up my head a little, gets into my eye. That is one location that things can get a little bit trapped. I want to cut this so you can see a little bit deeper. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to try to cut you a little loop here. It might have gotten underneath it more. Okay, let's cut it here. All right. So what you can see, I've kind of cut just a little chunk out of that upper trap, is that it goes through this trap, but... If we're looking, I mean, you can see that it's coming from underneath it. So if this were to be compressing on that nerve, that could reproduce, reproduce symptoms. Um, let's actually take a little deeper look and look at another layer of muscle that could also be problematic. So I'm actually going to go ahead and just take off the upper trap in general. Down here, and this is another pretty important point, um, and we're getting into layers where truly it's hard to get to just on the surface, which is why I'm a really big proponent of trinial therapy. It um, doesn't have to be involved, but I can get to any and all of these structures that we're about to cover. So this is your semispinalis muscle. Um, it also works on extending the head back, rotating the head. It is supplied by this greater occipital nerve here. This is still right here. This is still an occipital nerve. It's called your third occipital nerve. Your lesser occipital nerve is right down here and we'll get to that also but these guys um let's cut a little layer out of that and you can see how it tunnels right underneath it okay so i'm actually going to cut this whole chunk off Getting a little messy here so you can start to see through this window here Let's cut even more of that out. You can see that that muscle, now we've gone through upper trap, we've gone through semispinalis, it runs even deeper, and it goes through another pathway. Let's take off this entire layer. So it makes this little loop underneath this muscle here called your obliquus capitis inferior. You don't have to remember any of this. Um, but when I'm palpating and when I'm kind of feeling around, these are muscles that I am feeling for to see if they're tender, to see if they reproduce, things like that. But you'll see that nerve travels underneath, and let's go ahead and take off that muscle so you can see even farther. And that is where you'll see it stems from this cervical level. So when I'm do talking about things like joint mobilization, I'm going to be moving the structures in this area to try and loosen up the area, decrease some of that muscle guarding around it, decrease the sensitivity. Let's put back some of the muscles. Let's talk about that lesser occipital nerve. On you, this was actually a point that you discussed that um, did reproduce some eye pain when it was poked on. So this right here, this muscle also extends the neck, rotates, and it side bends your neck. But you can see where this lesser occipital nerve, it pierces right through that muscle belly and then makes a turn coming around it. So if this muscle here 
is tight, it's going to pinch right on it and then send you that pain up and over. And there's actually fibers that will connect and it will make a pain symptom right behind the eye. So when that all starts getting involved, you start getting this terrible throbbing, this kind of zapping, shooting pain that can go down the trap, can come up and over. But there's a few different spots. Those are the main ones. So I'm going to clear that off. Let's clear off where I've cut some things. Oops, not cut more things. Okay. Now, in general, things that can happen. So that's pretty straightforward just looking at those occipital nerves. But what, all, what else can happen is that where they send that symptom up to your eye, they can cause that whole upper trap, if we put that back on, to feel pain and discomfort. Okay, so we talked about nerve referrals, but I want to touch a little bit about muscle referrals. This is really going to seem familiar to you. So, as far as pain goes, this is your splenius capitis muscle, okay? This is your splenius cervicis muscle. You don't have to remember any of that, but know that the, tr like the trigger point referral pattern, um, and I'll put this split screen, so if you can see for splenius capitis, that referral pattern goes to the top of your head where you're kind of sore, oddly enough, but not, makes sense now. Now your splenius cervicis referral pattern, boom, right to the eyeball. So between that combination of nerve referrals and muscle referrals, um, and these muscles, by the way, are innervated by the same cervical level as those occipital nerves. But I think it pretty well covers exactly what's going on with you. And that would be pretty typical why whenever pressure is applied to some of these muscles, you can reproduce it. Um, but you got to get the nerve supply and we got to get all of it in agreement to be happy to move forward. But I think we can do that. Okay. Um, there's a, one other nerve that I'd like to point out called your spinal accessory nerve. It actually is what does the motor and the actual action of your upper trap. So I'm, now that you're seeing the trap here, I want to actually expose that spinal accessory nerve. Not the one I want. Let me zoom in a little farther here. An important one, but not the one I want. Okay. Your accessory nerve. So this is actually considered to be a spinal nerve and not just one that stems lower down the chain, a peripheral nerve, because you can see it's coming straight off of the spine. Now, what it does and where it sends discomfort is it can send it down into the trap, down on the border of the shoulder blade, but that is the nerve that actually causes your upper trap to be able to fire. So that's always another one, too. Um, it does have some referral pains up to the eye socket actually more around kind of the the entirety of the eye socket so with some pain around it not necessarily directly behind but it can be at play too so just wanted to give you an overview